Now that's a rattle. That's exactly what the problem was. The car's owner told us he had a rattle when he turned the AC system on. So I've got the belt off. I've got the refrigerant recovered before I put it up on the lift. John, our Mazda 3 needs a compressor. Yeah, it does. Welcome to Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com. You know, that one was a dead giveaway, Brian, but a lot of these need a gauge reading, man. We always do that on Tech Garage. Yeah, absolutely. And it was blowing cold air the whole time. Strange symptom, but the rattle bang was a clue that the clutch or something on that pulley was a problem. Yeah, and this one's going to be an easy one for you. It's four bolts going to be a piece of cake. You already got it recovered. We're good to go. But we have to understand a little bit about that AC gauge readings. I mean, we owe it to our viewers. You know, there's a high and a low side when it comes to the system. Take a look at this first graphic here. And this is important because the high and the low side is always divided by the compressor and the control valve. Brian, walk us through the high side. Well, a little AC 101. It comes out of the compressor under high pressure through that condenser, through that entire route, through a dryer all the way up to that control valve and then there's a handoff. There you go. Then what happens in the low side is where the compressor is actually pulling. It's pushing on the high side, pulling it in up through the control valve, through the evaporator and back to the compressor. So if you were to hook up your gauges, the low side would be on the blue side. That's why the pressures are low because we're usually pulling on that side. The compressor is actually sucking it in. The other side is on the red side. That's pushing it out. So that makes all the difference in the world. Absolutely. I got four 10 millimeter bolts, a few connections. This compressor is going to be off in no time. You get to it. You know, we have to understand a little bit about pressure. So take a look at this graphic. You can see the first one right there and we're running about 30 to 40 PSI on the low side. That's about normal. 150 to 250 on the high side. That's pretty good. Depending on the refrigerant and the temperatures outside, it could vary a little bit. If you go over to the right, well, you see the low side is actually running high pressure and then the high side has high pressure as well. So if they're both high, that's usually something through the airflow or condenser causing it or too much refrigerant in the system. Now on the bottom left over there, you see the low sides running low pressure and the high side has low pressure as well. That's usually just an undercharged system. And the last one there on the right, well, the low side has high pressure and the high side has low pressure. And what that means is actually the compressor is not pushing or pulling any of the refrigerant in. You're pretty much going to need a compressor. Now I have a couple compressors right here and this is pretty cool too because this one's called a variable displacement compressor and I can actually demonstrate it for you in action. This is pretty cool. What makes it a variable displacement compressor? Well, check out these pistons inside. Now I'm going to move it and you're going to see the stroke of these pistons. Keep your eye on the stroke of these pistons right here because what's going to happen is although they're moving, they're not really moving very far. The stroke is not too much on there. So as I go around now, what I can do is with the variable displacement compressor, I can come over here, bam, change the displacement. Now watch the stroke. So as I go around here, wow, we just changed the stroke. What does that do? Well, if we're changing the stroke, every time the refrigerant comes into the compressor, we're actually changing the pressures. We can do that electronically or like this one with mechanical pressures and the use in the system of doing it. Now, what's going on with this car here is everything's fine. We're riding along. You can see it right here. I'm pushing the pulley. Everything's good. But what happens is once I magnetically engage that clutch, you see that clutch pull in and out. Every time it pulls in and out, now that starts running the second one here. So that's running all the pistons inside. Now once we develop that load, well, that load starts making that pulley growl and we're starting to get that noise. So once it's disengaged, spins really easy, bam, connect it, everything's pushing inside of the compressor. The compressor starts working and we're having a bearing failure. Well, Brian's moving right along with that bearing failure. He's about got the compressor off. Let's check in with him. Well, it really is easy down here. There's the wiring harness out. You want to get this kind of up out of your way. And I got three of the four mounting bolts out. It's rarely this easy. So quick access. Let me break this guy loose. We're going to get this old compressor down out of here. Now you're going to see in just a moment what we're going to do after the break for really good quality service when you replace a compressor. Here's the old one. Ugh, down and out. Wiring harness, everything protected. So take a look here, the refrigerant lines. See the O-rings right here? We're gonna replace those O-rings. There's a whole story and process and procedure you gotta follow with the right amount of PAG oil. We'll tell you more about that after the break. Well, Brian, like always, my hands are nice and clean. Yours are dirty. Of course you made short work of that compressor. Absolutely, I tell you what, I wish they were all this easy. Four 10 millimeter mounting bolts. Of course, we had a rock guard we got out of there. That guy came out very easily, but boy, you can sure hear the difference here. Yeah, yeah, this one here, it's clunking, it's rattling. You can't feel it on TV, but trust me, it's grinding. This one here, rock solid, man, just like rockauto.com. Absolutely, and I tell you what, I love this big fancy demo 
demo you got here, AC 101 and 202, but my friend, it all starts right here, so I'm going to get him installed. Well, you get him installed, and I'll show you guys this big fancy demo. Our friends from Console Lab sent us an AC system. I could fire this thing up. This is a true running car. Everything you see on your air conditioning system is happening right here. And my friends, it all starts right here at the compressor. Now, the compressor is what Brian's replacing, and this is where it divides that high and that low side. So what's happening here is we'll go out the high side here with the high side gas. This is what's coming out here. Very, very hot. So if you felt your compressor on one side, it's hot, and the other side's cold, well, at least you know the compressor's working. It's pumping out here a high side gas. Then what it does, it comes out, and it goes over here to what's called a condenser. This is on the front of the car. This is where we're getting rid of that heat. And think about your bathroom mirror. You know, when you take a shower, it comes out steam, and then as it starts to cool down, it goes down there, it turns into a liquid. Well, that's what's happening here. The fans are blowing, that heat dissipation's happening, bam, it's going in a high pressure gas, and it's coming out an actual high pressure liquid. So it's coming in a gas, a liquid. Now, if you felt these two lines, one going in and one going out, it should have gave up some heat to the outside atmosphere. So you should feel a difference between these two, hot and maybe warm. And then what happens from there, it travels all the way over to this side. Now down here, this is our control device. Now a lot of people have orifice tubes and some have H blocks or TXV, thermostatic expansion valves. But the whole key is here. We're changing pressures once again. We did it at the compressor. Now we're doing it over here. So what's happening here is we're coming in a hot liquid, high pressure right here. This is red hot coming in and then bam, we change that pressure. When we change that pressure, we get that temperature difference. So this is really cold, but now it turns into a low pressure liquid. High pressure liquid, low pressure liquid. You can see it flowing through. Super, super hot, super, super cold. If it was hot on both sides, it's not working. So you can feel the difference. Then what it does, it travels up here to the evaporator. This is located inside your car. Your blower motor is blowing it over, and what's happening, the heat's jumping on the refrigerant, taking a ride back up to the condenser, bam, throwing it to the outside air. Thus, you're getting air conditioning. So what's happening here is this cold liquid's coming in under low pressure, and then it boils off and it comes out a gas once again, low pressure gas. So from the evaporator, we go all the way back, pulls it back into the compressor and starts that cycle over and over again. So just by feeling those lines, you can tell what's going on. But more importantly, Brian's actually replacing our compressor. Ours didn't have a pressure problem, didn't even have a temperature problem. But if that clutch started to fail or that bearing started to fail, you would probably see those pressures we saw earlier where the low side would be high pressure because it's not pulling and the high side would be a low pressure because it's not pushing. Good look at an AC cycle. You're only going to see this here on Tech Garage, but I'll tell you what, really cool cat. Brian's underway over there. Let's see how he's coming along. All right, there's the second O-ring off. We'll come back to that in just a moment. So. The next step is to go to John's desk and get a flower cup. He's got a bunch of these and it disturbs me. But the reason why is I took the old compressor and drained the available pag oil out of it, spun it a few times to try to get it all out. It was about an ounce. So we took the new pag oil bottle, put about an ounce into John's flower cup, and that's when I'm going to enter back into the new compressor. So do that gently, take your time, and as you pour it in, you want to turn the whole clutch assembly and kind of prime it right around there, get it full, get all that in it. It doesn't take too much. You're going to be surprised how little it takes, but you want to get that primed in there, right? And we're good, up, up out of the other side. So let me set that off to the side for just a minute. Now, the O-rings, critically important. You can do this whole repair, you skip the O-rings, you're going to have greater issues. Another good habit here for you is go clean your hands. I'm working with clean hands, get the pag oil, I've got the new O-rings that came with the kit, and I'm just going to massage them in between two fingers, get them lubed up, not only so they'll go on easier, but they're ultimately going to seal and protect it because the PAG oil has a lot of conditioner in it. All right, so let me start with the big one first. Come up in here, you'll hold this, and you'll see it and feel it sit down in the groove. Now, the smaller one. Come up. Come over, take your time, seat it down in. Want to make sure you're in that groove. I like to rotate it around, really get that oil spread. Now we're ready. We're going to wipe this thing down where I made a mess. Now, ready to install this guy. So there's the lines. There's the mounting bolts. I'm going to get this up. I'm going to get it torqued. 
And I'll tell you what, we're gonna have some mighty cool riding around them. Well, speaking of cool, we're doing the lower end assembly and the plastic gauge work on the LS engine. Stay with us on Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com.